Hello everyone, this is Jeff Johnson, creator of Weathermaker. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to integrate Weathermaker with UMMORPG from scratch. So let's dive right in. First thing you'll want to do is get UMMORPG from the Asset Store. It's got a great price for what you're getting. Uh, UMMORPG Scenes World is the demo scene that they've provided, and here I am in that demo scene. The first thing you'll want to do is grab the Weathermaker Prefab and put it in your scene. You can either do this from Window Weathermaker, Add Weathermaker to Scene, or just drag in the Prefab from the project. Great, Weathermaker is now in the scene. You don't need to customize anything else on the Weathermaker Prefab, but there are some additional setup items you need to do. On the main camera, you need to make sure the clear flags are solid color and all zeros. The next thing I would recommend doing is using deferred rendering. If you're on VR, I would probably set that to forward, but you could set that to deferred rendering to get a better appearance. The next thing you'll want to do is take the directional light that's in the scene. This is the sun for the scene, but Weathermaker already gives you a sun, so just delete that. Uh, the Weathermaker prefab has a sun under the day-night cycle. Once you've done that, head on over to your lighting settings window. You can open this from window rendering lighting settings. Make sure the Weathermaker skybox material is set, and then you can also set the sun. Everything else looks good. Uh, custom re environment reflections with none or a cube map of your choice. Be aware, real-time and mixed lighting can impact performance, so just if you turn those on, watch your CPU usage. The next thing you need to do is bring in the Weathermaker Mirror Network Script. This ties the networking with Weathermaker. You can create an empty game object. I just call it Weathermaker Mirror Networking bring that to the top and then we're just going to go to that script and add component just search for network maybe or mirror there it is weathermaker mirror network script and then we'll just reset the transform just to clean up so i believe that's probably all you need to do for scene setup other than post processing so before we do post processing let me show you how to set up the player prefabs on ummorpg those are in UMMORPG, Prefabs, Entities, Players. We're going to just set up the Warrior, but the Archer gets set up the exact same way. The first thing you need to do is add an audio listener. Weathermaker identifies a player by looking for an audio listener component. The next thing to do is add a Sphere Trigger Collider. Set that radius to be really small. The third and final thing to, you need to do is add Weathermaker Network Demo Player Script. Now this could become a script of your own. I've made it a demo script because this is probably something that you should make your own script for, but if you want something quick and dirty in a pinch, this works. And what this does is allows you to activate or deactivate this audio listener based on whether this is a local player or a network player. If this is a network player, that audio listener will be deactivated and Weathermaker will be able to tell that this is a network player and not the local player. And that's very important for certain handling in Weathermaker. So now this warrior is all set up, ready to go. The last thing you probably want to check is the main camera. You want to make sure that audio listener is disabled because you can't have two audio listeners active in a scene. Alright, now we're going to do a little bit of rendering setup. You can see the scene looks really great. They've provided some wonderful default models, but it looks a little bit plain because there's no post-processing and no fog. Luckily, Weathermaker has fog built in. So let's do some enabling of Weathermaker fog first. If you go to Weathermaker Prefab Profiles Fog, pretty much all of the weather profiles use this default fog profile, which actually has no fog density by default, but you could change that to like 005. Maybe ratchet up the start depth to 100 so it goes off in the distance and ends at 1000. Something you can play with. But let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So now you can see the back has some nice fog. I'm going to actually bring in that start depth a little bit so that the fog starts showing up sooner. 
will make it 50 and 5,000. These are just settings you'll have to play with. And probably the last thing I'll do is ratchet that density up a little bit more. That's looking really good. I'm pretty happy with those results, so I'm going to keep this. And now let's move on to post-processing. For post-processing, window, package manager, post-processing, install. We'll wait a minute for this to complete. Time warp successful. We have post-processing in the project now. The main camera is where you want to set this post-processing up. Typically what you can do is change the camera to a ignore raycast probably is good or transparent effects or you can make a new layer. Maybe I'll just make a new net layer for the main camera. This helps with performance with post-processing. So let's put this on the main camera layer and add component post-processing layer and post-processing volume. Make the volume global, and now you're ready to configure. Main camera layer, anti-aliasing of your choice. You can kind of see subtle differences there. SMAA I think looks the best. I don't know about the performance, but I'm going to go with SMAA because it really seems to smooth those lines out beautifully. Turn off that deferred fog because you're going to be using WeatherMaker fog. So I click new to make a new profile and my profile shows up next to my scene here. Go into that profile and there's a number of effects you definitely want to do. Start with color grading and then add vignette, bloom, depth of field, and ambient occlusion. These are kind of the five bread and butter post-processing effects for Unity. So let's turn on the color grading first. ASIS is a kind of a filmic tone map, which looks really good. It's a little bit dark now, so we can raise this exposure a little bit. Probably 1 is pretty good. Maybe I'll go down to 7 or so, 0.7. That looks decent enough. The vignette allows you to kind of fade the edges of the screen, so it focuses the eye's attention more to the center of the screen. So if you raise that up, you can see this vignette effect coming. And something like that looks pretty good. Really draws the eyes to the center of the screen. Alright, so that's the vignette. The bloom, you kind of have to start the, start the game to really configure the bloom properly. So now with the bloom, we'll look up at the sky and now we can make sure our bloom isn't too crazy. That's probably too much. That's not bad. We'll go with an intensity of 3, but if it's too high, just lower that down. Okay, the next thing to do is configure ambient occlusion. This is a really nice effect. You'll notice right by these fence posts, the edges are pretty hard. So in order to fix that, we can do ambient occlusion. Now watch these edges by those fence posts. Just see how the shadows face super nicely. That's really, really looks more realistic. So I'm going to leave this probably at 0.4 as a value that looks pretty good. Now we have very realistic shadows. You'll notice all of these shadows kind of wiggling and jiggling. There's a couple of options you have here. Uh, the one is you can go to the WeatherMaker Prefab Day-Night Cycle Profile and you can set the speeds to zero. That gets rid of the wiggling shadows, but now you don't have dynamic time of day. The other option is you can use temporal anti-aliasing. And this pretty much smooths those out. There's a little bit of wiggle, but it's not nearly as bad as it was. So those are a couple of options. The other thing you can try is going into the quality settings and changing your shadow distance. Right now it's 1024. If you lower that, you get much cleaner shadows and less jiggling, but then shadows further away don't look as nice. So it's kind of a battle between shadow quality and jitter. So 256, I think, is probably the sweet spot in this scene. So the last thing you want to do is if you want weather transitions for the game, you just go to Weather Make a Prefab Global Weather Zone and turn that on. And let's make sure that that works. So we're going to go ahead and run this game. 
and click start. And now we have started with some nice rainy weather. The only, only the first transition will jump like that. Uh, additional transitions should fade smoothly, so let's just give it a second until it comes to another weather transition. Looks like it's switching to medium heavy clouds, so this rain's going to fade out nicely. And we're going to go to medium heavy clouds. That looks pretty good. All right, I would like to show you a demo with probably three or four players now. So I'm going to set that up and then I'll be back when that's set up. You can see all four players in action. Everybody's raining now. You're probably seeing some banding because of video compression. So let's uh, wait for another transition here. Everybody's going to a clear profile now. I'm rendering four games here, so it may be a little choppy. Sorry about that. But uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. You got some lightning from that storm because it only lasted for 10 seconds, and the lightning has a delay once it shoots off of about 20 or 30 seconds. With a typical storm, you're not going to see that if you change the duration to like two minutes. But with the 10 second demo durations, you kind of have some artifacts like that. So we'll wait for one more transition and then we will close this up. Everybody's getting medium clouds now, so just watch the skies. And everybody's getting medium clouds. Now you may think this guy doesn't have clouds or gal, but the clouds are not pixel, per pixel perfect on every player, but they're the general coverage and appearance. So. So that's it for Weathermaker UMMO integration. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, please reach out to support at digitalruby.com. If you have questions, I'd be glad to help. And good luck on your RPGs and MMOs.